So here we have Lopunny from the Pokemon series and I've decided to analyze it because I've noticed a certain trend in media where Lopunny is depicted in mature themes. I've gathered research to figure out why this is happening and how our bodies may be reacting to all of this. We start off our journey by looking at the physical attraction because our eyes create the first impression of any person we meet which includes the body properties and non-verbal cues. While looking at its face, we get the impression that Lopunny is no pushover and is just happy to be here based on the light smile and attentiveness of the eyes. But something I intentionally left out is how people enjoy giving Lopunny seductive eyes, which efficiently targets fearful attraction. And as we take a step back for some background, we need to consider how in history, health has been heavily associated with the attractiveness of the body. The chemical estrogen has been known to take fat and store it in the hips, which links to how waist to hip ratio is another factor to be considered when analyzing low honey's proportions. In addition to health, there are some visual cues that lead us to believe that a person is either healthy or strong through good posture that emphasizes confidence, power, and leadership, while bad posture expresses discomfort, untrustworthiness, and at times shyness. Low honey manipulates her posture to a degree that might be bad when considering the angle because the spine might get worn out but Playboy and other adult productions have taught us to enjoy poses since they highlight the hips, waist or chest and in this case here we can see our attention directed towards the legs, head and hands. Does Lopunny have boobs? No, so we can skip this point. Gender roles over time have placed the idea that attractive people have a certain standard of body type which either changes or evolves over time from this to this and now this. But on the other hand, it would be silly to ignore the health risks. Too many muscles are a burden and it is important to know the difference between a muscle mommy and a muscle monster. There's a gap in body weight which is considered comfortable to live in because anorexia Anorexia and obesity are genuine health concerns that should not be glorified in some cases. In the end, I guess the goal is to have enough nutrients to keep the body satisfied while observing the fat percentage in the body. But it's not all about the body. So let's put the mind into the spotlight. For this attraction to be rational, we need to consider the associations being made when looking at low punny. If you look at low punny and you think about your ideal person, then you are on the safer side of the spectrum but if you like everything you see then you should live your life because I'm not here to kink shame. Emotions triggered by seeing low punny include love, intimidation, confusion, adoration, and sympathy based off of people's first impressions of low punny. These first impressions are usually made in people's childhoods. As childhood crushes develop, the main contenders are Misty, Jesse, and Professor Toro. But over time, as the viewer grows, they start to have different tastes. As dopamine and norepinephrine releases during the episodes to give you the yummy in my tummy sensations that unbeknownst to you will become the fuel for your kawaii phase later in life. Wait, I'm getting distracted. So as far as your brain associates the funny little creatures with the ecstatic feeling, it starts to manipulate your memories with serotonin and endorphins, changing the perspective on the situation, slowly creating a figure in your head that may be more personalized than the original Pokemon. As the raging hormones kick in, your brain starts to crave looking at certain features in people that have been included into the designs of Pokemon. The increased dopamine intake from the following cravings could lead to to similar types of addiction seen in overusing your phone and late night hub sessions. And as the credits roll, you will finally get a chance to relax, pick up your phone, just to see all the memes from the same series. The first Pokemon meme that comes to mind is a screenshot from a certain website. The meme presents an unknown person's argument or research that states that Vaporeon, one of Eevee's evolutions, is a capable partner in bed. I'm so tired. 
So over time, after the meme ran its course, it had started to decompose to such a degree that it's only recognizable by those with memories of its birth. Not only Vaporeon, but there are plenty of memes to keep the fanbase busy, with some star players being Licky Tongue standing behind Jesse to Mewtwo theories that seem to be trending with more Pokemon. Since memes can reach corners of the internet, it's not impossible for juicy memes to reach the eyes of innocent adolescents which could cause childhood ruining trauma. Neglect of mental health or responsibilities brings some extreme cases where the kid could be using their new feelings against Pokemon to bring control back into their hands, but that's only the worst case scenario. Almost as bad as not subscribing after watching this far. So what is a furry? A furry is an animal covered in fur. Some examples of furries include dogs, bears, and not lizards. Alright, enough jokes. A furry is someone who is interested in anthropomorphic animals. Some enjoy being a part of the audience while others like dressing as those anthropersonas, in other words, a fursona. But why am I talking about furries? I'm talking about them because they are my first example of groups that would like low punny's design. The next group that would like low punny's design is Digimon fans. And to spare myself from endlessly listing groups, I'll just say the last bunch left would be people who adore cute animals. And before you pass your judgments on the team that worked hard to develop new Pokemon every generation, let's think about fictional characters who have gone through the Awuga filter in children's media. Now, We've got Miss Bellum, Bugs, and Lola Bunny, Flynn Rider, Varric, Robin Hood, Shigo, Magara, and Mr. Krabs with some honorable mentions. Have you ever noticed how Disney or Illumination have designed some of their characters? Well, it's not strange for proportions to be unrealistic because creativity is boundless even if some lines shouldn't be crossed. Now their goal is to create characters that are either attractive or appealing to look at, but bending to gender norms is one of the safer options. Even if some people think that the kinks of young people are being manipulated by having certain characters appear on screen, in reality it's to increase production sales since cute cells. An obvious example of using attractive characters to sell products would be the anime figurine market that has a large variety of flavors that cater to most audiences. And if in doubt, always check for certain body proportions for girls, waist, hips, and mouths, larger upper body, and baby legs for guys. Now, the question is, will we ever break free of gender stereotypes? I don't know, will snakes get their legs back? The inclusion of adult jokes creates this dark allure of liking the wrong characters like Yzma, Hades or Maleficent but alright, enough's enough. This video has gone off long enough so let's answer the question. Is Lopani hot? No.